we're going to go ahead and talk about um, how we draw these and represent them. Uh, so we call these Lewis structures. So you have these notes here. Um, we're going to go through the rules together and we'll look at some examples. So Lewis structures are a way to represent the valence electrons of an atom using dots. Uh, we'll review valence electrons in a second, but remember these are the outside electrons. Uh, these electrons are important because they're involved in bonding. So when two atoms combine together, so one's on the outside that link together to make bonds, so they hold the atoms together. Uh, the Lewis structure for an atom is formed by writing the element symbol and placing one dot next to each symbol for the valence electrons. So we have these dots that represent those electrons. So for example, carbon would have four dots surrounding it because it has four Lewis structures. Um, chlorine would have seven. So when we combine these um, in a molecule, atoms are held together by these bonds. So we can see that they're going to kind of join together. Any place where there is one electron, it's going to make a connection with another place that has one electron. So these bonds are formed when pairs of electrons are shared. For example, each carbon will, will bond with four chlorines to form this carbon tetrachloride. And this is what we saw yesterday with the name. Each bond in the molecule represents a pair of shared electrons represented by a dash. And this is going to be um, how we're drawing it today. So this dash, this line represents two electrons. Uh, the guiding set of principles behind this is what we call the octet rule, which says that each element is trying to get a full set of electrons, which means eight. Uh, when an atom shares electrons, pairs with four chlorine, it has an octet. Um, so we're going to look mostly at this down here. The, that's our uh, three big rules for drawing Lewis structures. So we're going to figure out the number of valence electrons. We're going to join all of them together with bonds. And then we're going to arrange um, using the octet. So this is kind of a process. Um, it's going to take some practice to get the hang of it. So we have a couple different um, symbols here, double, triple, and single bonds all represents um, connections between atoms. So we could have a single bond, which is one connection that involves two electrons. We have a double bond, which is two connections. So it's kind of like putting together um, like Legos or building blocks. Um, once you know the rules of how they connect, uh, you can kind of figure out how to put this puzzle together. So really, this is all it is, is kind of a puzzle to figure out how these atoms are going to connect so that they follow these three rules right here, that um, they use up all the electrons, they're all connected with bonds, and that everyone has uh, eight electrons around it, which is our octet rule right here. So a lot of this is just comes from practice, and we're going to spend a lot of time practicing this. So um, we're going to start today by uh, going through some examples of this. Um, before we do that, uh, let's talk a little bit about valence electrons. So what are they? They're electrons that are on the outermost energy level or ring. So we saw this before with our Bohr models. These outside electrons are our valence electrons. Um, we can draw the Bohr model out for the, these elements, or we can just look at the periodic table. So depending on what row or column they're in, ignoring the middle group, this represents the number of valence electrons. So everything in the first column has one valence electron. Everything in the second column has two, and so on and so forth, going down through it. So for today, um, that's kind of our like big thing that we need to know. Um, let me go ahead. If you haven't bookmarked this, um, I suggest you guys do. Um, this is going to be our. I'm going to put our periodic table in the chat, so you can pull that up to help you out with the problems for today. All right. Um, 
so we're going to go through some examples together. Um, there's two examples that we're going to have you work with. And then uh, we're going to have you do four problems today on your own. Um, example three, we'll probably get to tomorrow. Um, we'll see how we do today. Uh, I want to just kind of focus on um, just mastering uh, these, these problems. So we're going to take our time with it. So we're going to start off with our first example. We're going to go through and kind of figure out the rules of how we put this together. So for number one, we're going to draw uh, Lewis structure for N F3. So let me switch to my doc cam and we'll get started with that. Okay. Uh, so we wanna draw the Lewis structure for NF3. So let's break down NF3. NF3 means we have one nitrogen and three fluorine. So we want to figure out how many valence electrons we have total for all of these. So if we look at nitrogen, fluorine, we want to figure out how many valence electrons each of them have. Let me grab my periodic table. Thought I had you. I don't have a hard copy. That's fine. Um, let's let's do it this way. So remember, um, our number of valence electrons are going to be the group on the periodic table or the column. Five, six, seven, and eight. So these are going to be all of these um, number of valence electrons. So if we look at, we're going to try to find NF3. So we have N, nitrogen, has five valence electrons. And fluorine, F, has seven. So nitrogen has five, fluorine has seven. And we get that just from our place on the periodic table. So nitrogen has five and fluorine has seven. So we have three fluorines. So our total here, we have, I'm gonna add them together. So we get seven times three, this is 21 plus five. We get 26 valence electrons. So this is how uh, we're going to, this is how many electrons we have to fill for this whole um, structure here. So we've counted up our number of electrons. We know we have 26 to work with because nitrogen is going to bring five and each fluorine is going to bring seven. All right. Um, so from here, we're going to try to draw this out. Um, when we draw this, we want to try to make it symmetrical so that uh, both sides are the same if possible. And this is kind of the hardest part to just get started. So we're going to just write these out here and space them out so that they're kind of away from each other. So here we want to connect the atom bonds. So we want to connect with bonds. So 
So we're going to create lines that connect these atoms together because the idea is these need to be connected to one another. So we have these lines that represent connections. All right, um, so we have our total number of electrons here. We have all of the different elements in this molecule connected with bonds. Our last part is we're gonna fill in the electrons. So we're gonna fill in electrons. So the way we go about this, each dot represents uh, one electron. And each line represents two electrons. Every atom needs eight electrons around them. This is our octet. And we need to use, uh, let me try to get this on frame. And we need to use all valence electrons. So um, easiest way to go about this. Uh, so here's kind of our key. Uh, we have one electron represented by dots, uh, two electrons represented by a line. Um, every atom needs eight electrons around them. And we need to use all of our valence electrons. So one way to go about this is just try to get, make sure every atom has eight electrons around it first. So let's start by the fluorine here. So if we just look at fluorine right now, how many electrons are touching or connected to this fluorine? So starting off, how many electrons are connected to this fluorine? We have one bond. And each bond represents two. So currently, right now, there are two electrons on this. We need them to have eight. It only has two here. So we're going to add electrons until we have eight. So we have two here. It's going to be three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're adding electrons to make sure that this has eight around it. So now this has eight because it has two in this bond, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're gonna do this for each element. If we look at the bottom here, fluorine, we have two here. So we're gonna do three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have this fluorine here, we have two. Four, six, eight. So when we add electrons, we always add them in pairs. So we did all the fluorines. Let's look at the nitrogen here. So if we look at nitrogen, we're counting it up. We have two in this bond, four, six. So we have two here four and six in these bonds. So this one needs two more. So we're gonna add two more electrons on top. So when we go through this, we have our kind of checklist. We have 26 electrons. So we want to make sure that everyone has eight electrons. So fluorine, two, four, six, eight. 
fluorine down here, two, four, six, eight. Fluorine right here, two, four, six, eight. So that works. Nitrogen in the center. We have two here, one, two, plus two in each bond. So two, four, six, eight. So everyone's happy, nitrogen and fluorine, they all have those. So our octet is okay. So that works. Um, if we count up the total number of electrons, all of these together have to add up to 26. So we count them up, we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and 26. So the total number of electrons is 26, and that works. So this represents how all of these are connected inside um, a molecule. And this is important because it shows us kind of how these are connected. So based on how they're connected, this tells us how they're going to behave later on. And it's going to tell us their properties, whether or not they don't stick to anything like Teflon, whether they're explosive, like um, hydrogen gas, whether they're um, going to react with other things. So this is going to be our final answer is going to be this structure right here. So that's our goal for today is to kind of draw some of these out. And we'll get some practice going through um, a few together. So that's NF3. So we're going to look at one more example, and then uh, we'll have you guys take some time to try some on your own. Um, let me try to get this. Let's try to make sure I get all this in frame. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the second one. So example number two. Uh, we're going to look at how to deal with hydrogen because hydrogen is going to be a little different. So we're going to draw Lewis structure. for uh, H2S. So let's go through the same thing that we did before. Um, we have hi two hydrogens, so H2S. We have two hydrogens and one sulfur. So I want you guys to take a minute and look at the periodic table. Try to figure out the number of valence electrons for hydrogen and sulfur, and then add them together. So our hydrogen would be here, or sulfur would be here. So each hydrogen should be one. And sulfur would be six. Yeah, and Michelle, you're absolutely correct. Caesar, you got it correct as well. 
So we're going to add those two together, um, three together. So we have uh, one for each hydrogen and six for sulfur. So we have a total of eight valence electrons. So that's all we have really to play around with. So we want to connect these together. Uh, our goal is to make it symmetrical so that both sides are the same. So we're going to start with sulfur in the center. And we're going to pop hydrogen on each side. So we need to connect these with at least one bond. So this needs to have a bond connecting here. And this needs to have a bond connecting here. So there is one exception. Hydrogen only needs two valence electrons. to be full. We saw this before when we talked about um, like gaining or losing hydrogen kind of that exception. So this is the one where, where it's a little bit different. This hydrogen here has two electrons. So this is actually okay. We don't need to add more electrons to get eight for this because hydrogen only needs two electrons. So hydrogen on this side, same. It has two electrons inside the bond. Another way of looking at this, hydrogen only likes to form one bond. With no extra electrons. around it. So you're never going to see hydrogen covered in electrons like this. It's just going to be a single bond in hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen you can think of as kind of dead ends on um, molecules. They don't have any links to connect anything else. So what that means is we can't really put this in the center because it only makes one bond. So typically they go on the outsides. All right, so if we look at um, our rules, we want to check our octet. And we have eight electrons. So we want to make sure that both of these are correct in order for us to have a correct drawing. So um, here we have H2S. Hydrogen's okay. Let's look at the sulfur in the center. So currently the sulfur has four electrons, two in this bond and two in this bond. So there's a total of four electrons around sulfur. It needs to get eight. So we have two, four, six and eight, two, four, six, eight. That means sulfur here has the octet, so it is good. And we've used all of our eight electrons. So that's good as well. So there's kind of a few steps to these. Uh, we're going to figure out the total number of valence electrons. We're going to draw bonds to connect the different elements. And this is the hardest part is just kind of getting started, um, especially once we're just starting to learn this. Uh, typically, you just want to make it symmetrical so that both sides are the same. Um, so just kind of take a guess, connect things together and see what you come up with.
And then from there, you can go through and check to make sure everyone has eight electrons and that we use up the total number. So here it would be eight electrons total. Here it'd be 26 total on this. All right. Um, so for today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna only focus on a couple problems in class. So we have example one and two that we went through. Um, I want you to try out problem number one here. I want you to draw the structure for fluorine, which is just F2. So we'll take about five minutes or so and have you guys try this out and we'll go over it. And then we'll try out problem number two and then we'll go over it in class. So we should have two more examples for you. And that leaves two more for you to do tonight on your own. So we'll check in about five minutes on problem number one. If you feel like you got it and you want me to check your work, I can pull yours up if you're ready to move on. Uh, if not, I'll go over this in about five minutes. <laughs> 